Welcome to the System 6 information and instructional video. If you have already purchased a System 6 kit, or you are thinking of purchasing a kit, then please continue viewing as we may be able to answer many of your questions. If you still have questions after the video, or you are ready to place an order, please refer to the good people at Man of Rubber. You will find their website and phone number on the screen. System 6 is a two-part urethane paint that will add a protective layer for your fabric. When you receive your kit, you will find two equal parts labeled A and B. Here we have a one quart kit which includes one pint of A and one pint of B. A two quart kit with one quart of A and one quart of B. A one gallon kit with two quarts of A and two quarts of B. And now a two gallon kit with one gallon of A and one gallon of B. You might be asking yourself, which size is right for me? A tip from the pros is that a two-quart kit will cover approximately 12 square feet with a thickness of 30 to 40 mils, about the thickness of a credit card. If you are unsure of the dimensions, then refer to the manufacturer or your local shop for details about your boat. Remember, if you have leftover product, it has a shelf life of one year, which will decrease once it has been exposed to air and begins to oxygenate. So make sure that you put the lid back on securely to help eliminate further oxygenation. It is best to use the entire kit at once, so it may be best to order in smaller quantities unless you are confident about your measurements. Once you have determined the size kit you need, the next step is to choose a primer. These primers are engineered to increase adhesion strength on inflatable substrates. The type of primer you need depends on the material you are protecting. So, if you are painting on Hypalon material, you will need the Hypalon primer. If you are painting on urethane material, you will need the urethane primer, which comes in two equal parts, part A and part B. If you are painting on PVC material, then no primer is needed. Always check to make sure you use the right primer for your material. Otherwise, you may find that the urethane will not adhere and will simply not stick to the substrate. A tip from the pros about primers is that you should have a 1 to 8 primer to urethane ratio. So if you're using a 1 quart kit, which is 32 ounces of urethane, then you will need 4 ounces of primer. Your System 6 distributor will be able to help you determine the required amount of primer. Using System 6 allows you to add colors to blend to the pre-existing material, or to add accents or designs. The Stay True colors are a range of pigments that have been engineered to provide exceptional stability and color fastness. In addition to including the most popular raft colors, they also can be blended to match custom colors. Tinting White is a lightening agent for use in customizing colors, perfect for matching other systems' color fades. In small quantities, you will measure your Stay True colors by weight. If you are pushed for time, you may have ordered System 6 Accelerator to speed up the curing process. More information about Accelerator will be covered later in the Cure stage of the video. Before you get started applying System 6, you should make sure you have all of the necessary safety and application equipment. Always wear protective gloves, clothing, goggles, and respirator to prevent exposure to the product and byproduct of surface preparation. You do not want to breathe the fumes or have primer or urethane contact your skin. Use in a well-ventilated area. Using a fan to draw fumes away from you is a good idea to have in addition to a well-ventilated area. Do not use electric hand tools when mixing product. System 6 is highly flammable. After you have gathered the necessary safety equipment, make sure you have what you need to mix and apply the product. You will need an electric drill, nylon abrasion wheel, 100 grit sandpaper, MEK or isopropyl alcohol when using urethane and PVC, toluene for hypolon, grease pencil, masking tape, lint-free towel, a couple short napped 4-inch rollers, a couple clean mixing containers, a still wool pad, soapy water, clean water, and some paper towels. A pressure gauge will also be handy. Now that you have gathered your necessary safety and application equipment, 
it is time to get your raft ready for application. The following nine steps will make up the prep portion of the video. Step one, begin by cutting away any and all loose material. You want a sound, smooth substrate and make sure that the boat holds air. If not, make the appropriate repairs. If you try to patch a leak with just System 6, air will push through before the product can cure and you will still have a leak. Step 2. Inflate the boat. Do not inflate to full working pressure. About 1.5 psi is ideal. You can use an inflatable pressure gauge to be exact. Step 3. Using a still wool pad, scrub the area to be coated with soapy water. Rinse completely with clear water to rid the area of any detergent residue. MEK or isopropyl alcohol can also be used to further ensure that the area is residually clean. Please note that MEK will stain PVC, so it must be used sparingly with the utmost precaution. Step 4. Do not touch the cleaned area. Step 5. Determine the area you wish to coat and mark the edges of that area with a grease pencil. Grease pencil marks could be a potential source of contamination and after step 9, remove the grease pencil marks. Plan to coat an area that is at least 2 inches beyond the area that you're trying to protect or repair. You are going to coat inside the taped area. Step 6. This next step is for hypolon and urethane coated fabrics. Lightly buff or sand the area that you've marked with either 100 grit sandpaper or with an abrasion wheel. Be very careful using power tools. Do not grind through the outer layer of hypolon or urethane. If the underlying scrim fabric is showing, you've gone too far. Step 7. Next, thoroughly vacuum the area to be coated and the surrounding areas, making sure the vacuum tip is clean. You may want to use a new or clean short bristled brush to help loosen sanding particles. Step 8. Next, using a dry lint-free towel, thoroughly wipe the area to be coated with toluene or hypolon or MEK for urethane and PVC. Remember, staining will occur using MEK on PVC, so only wipe within the prescribed area. Step 9. Mask around the area to be coated. Masking should be several inches wide. The following six steps will comprise the primer portion of the video. Make sure you are using the correct primer for your fabric. Step 1. Use the two-part System 6 urethane primer for urethane coated fabrics or System 6 hypolon primer for hypolon. Most PVC substrates will only need an MEK wipe. Step 2. Use a new brush with natural bristles. Synthetic bristles may melt and contaminate the work area. Paper towels can also be used for primer application. Do not pull the primer. Tip from the pros is thin to win. Step 3. Do not prime in direct sunlight. Step 4. Apply a thin, even coat. Be aware that the primer is very thin and will run, so be very careful. Step 5. Let the primer dry to a tacky state, typically 10 minutes on a warm day. The following four steps will take you through the urethane application process. If you are unsure about applying for the first time, then start with a small practice batch. Step 1. Rolling is easiest, so the following assumes the use of a roller. Use a short napped 4 inch wide roller Keep in mind that a roller will leave a semi-textured finish. Step 2. It is important that parts A and B be measured equally prior to pigment being added. If you're using pigment, add it to part A before mixing A and B together. Stir the pigment into part A thoroughly. It is important that the pigment is stirred well into part A, for it will not disperse properly when part B is added, due to reduced frictional density. Step 3. To mix the urethane, pour equal parts A and B into a clean container. Measure accurately. A graduated one gallon plastic bucket makes for a good container. 
If System 6 Accelerator is included in your package, then empty its full contents into the mixing container. If you are only using half of A and B, then only use half of the accelerator. Thoroughly stir the mixture vigorously for at least five minutes. This is important. Be sure to scrape the sides and the bottom of the container when stirring. Do not mix more than can be applied in 45 minutes. Apply the urethane immediately. If urethane is too thin, you may let it stand for 10 to 15 minutes. Step 4. Do not coat in direct sunlight. Make sure there is plenty of ventilation, that you are wearing the correct respirator, rubber gloves, and protective clothing. Do not breathe fumes or get the urethane on your skin. Begin coating the area where you want the thickest layer first. Wait 15 to 20 minutes between coats. If sagging occurs, give more time between coats. Do not allow the urethane to touch the masking until the final coat. Hence, moving from center of the area to the outside will allow for optimal build and symmetry. Removing the masking after the final coat has started to cure, about 30 minutes. Recommended thickness for the bottom chafer is about 30 to 40 mils, about the thickness of a credit card. Other areas should be about 10 to 20 mils. Each rolled coat should add 4 to 6 mils. So the bottom chafer should be 7 coats at the thickest point. Urethane cures slowly in good weather, 75 degrees Fahrenheit and low humidity. It cures slower in cool weather and faster in warmer weather. In ideal conditions, allow 10, yes, 10 days to fully cure. If System 6 Accelerator is included, it will reduce this time to 4 days, but no less. During the cure period, do not allow the urethane to touch itself. So do not roll the boat. Leave the boat inflated, but not to full pressure and unmoved until the urethane has fully cured. Note that even though the urethane will be dry to the touch, in just one day, it is not fully cured. And do not leave indirect sunlight. It is a good idea to have a few spare rollers and buckets. Have rags and some toluene to spot clean primer and urethane drips. Allow yourself plenty of time for application of primer and urethane. You have a 3 hour recoat window when the temperature is at 75 degrees Fahrenheit. Longer at cool temperatures, shorter at warmer. So you can add more layers if necessary. Remember that a 1 half gallon kit covers about 12 square feet at 30 to 40 mils. Your primer to urethane ratio should be 1 to 8. So for every 8 ounces of product, use 1 ounce of primer. If you use half of your product, use half of your accelerator. Do the same for pigment. It is very important to mix the product thoroughly. Do not rush this process. It may take several minutes. If you have any other questions about application or purchasing product, please contact Man of Rubber.